We're finally doing it. Tequinter Advanced Tutorial. In this video, we're going to be going over canvases, entry boxes, selection boxes, images, file selections, and error messages. Let's get right into it. Canvases. If you're making a complex Tequinter app, it's a great idea to start by creating canvases. Canvases cover your Tequinter window and allow more precise placements of your widgets. They're required for images, so I think it's a great practice to at least use one canvas per window. You can stack canvases on each other or side by side, but always start with at least one canvas per window. The way you configure a canvas is after you create your TK window, right here, add event equals TK, you would do the name of your canvas, equals to keenster.canvas, put your main window as the first parameter, and you can set the width and the height of the canvas as your next parameters. You can also set your background color and foreground color. If you want one canvas per window, then put your width and height matching your windows uh, width and height. As you can see here, I have width equals 384, height equals 284, and the geometry of our window is 384 by 284. This particular canvas makes this window with the background color being black, and this is the geometry of 384 by 284. Entry boxes. Okay, so going into widgets, entry boxes is pretty much the easiest widget to configure in this video. To make an entry widget, you start off by using your entry variable name equals entry. In the parameter, you wanna have text variable equals a string var. So here I have number entry equals string var, and row entry equals entry text variable equals number entry. The reason you have this string var is when you're ready to get the content of your entry box to manipulate it and use it for data, you use this right here, number entry dot get. Make sure not to use row entry dot get because that's simply the widget. You want to use the string var variable dot get. To show you how this works, this is my CSV editor. Once we open it up, this particular one is our view row entry right here. So this number entry is what we put into here. We put 60, the greater operator, <laughs> greater operator. <laughs> Once we hit this select row button right here and right here, it is going to do number entry dot get, and it's going to manipulate the data and show us rows after 60. If you want to change the dimensions of your entry box as well, this is where canvases come into play. If you have a canvas in your window, all of your widgets are now created by doing this canvas dot create window this is the pixel placement on your canvas where your widget is going to go you have an anchor so n equals north so it means just the top middle part of your widget you can do center if you'd like or do east west for left and right and finally every canvas dot create window needs a window so you do window equals row entry because row entry is our widget if you want to change the dimensions of your entry widget you can use the height and with parameters here i used width equals 30 but just to show you how crazy you can get let's make width equal 120 and now our box is much wider selection boxes so selection boxes are pretty simple once we create it it should look something like this where you have a box that you can click on and it'll give you a list of options i'm going to show you how to create this box as well as get the inputted data that they put into this box. Here's our column select function for our application. You start off by getting a string var. In the parentheses, you want to put the parent window. You want to start by having a list of selections that the user can choose from in the selection box. So here I have list names equals list columns just to make sure that list columns doesn't get changed or altered by this part of the application. And here we create the actual widget. List cell or list selection equals option menu. First parameter being the parent window, of course. You want to then use that string var variable that we created first, column select var, and then asterisk your or list of selection. So here I have list name. So I do asterisk list name. If you don't use the asterisk, it won't divide all of your elements in your list as different selections. Next, we do canvas.create window. Here's our coordinates for placing the widget. Put anchor north and window equals list selection. Width and the height are totally up to you. So to get the data that the user selected, I created a button, column select. It passes to a function that alters the database that this application is viewing. To actually get this selection, we use 
column select var dot get and column select var is our string var this is similar to our entry box where we had a string var that the user types in you always do the string var variable dot get images now this is probably the most difficult one to use but it is still not super hard first of all you're going to need an image that you want to put in your application right i would say that it's best practice to put the image that you want to use in the same directory as your uh, Python app. So here in list organizer, I have coffee shop .jpg, which looks like this. If I run app.py, here is that coffee shop .jpg. Before we get into the actual programming, let's go over the libraries that we're going to need for the image. Import both sys and os to find the images in your computer. If you're using Tekinter, you can also just use the file selector. Like if you saw, I have a file selector in my data science program to find a CSV file. You can use this by doing from Tekinter import file dialog. And if you do like a query equals file dialog, ask open file name, it'll return the directory to that file, which I've made this application after my uh, list organizer. So this would be actually pretty good to utilize in my list organizer to change the image that is on the main page. But that's for later Reese to do in his programming time. Right now, I'm going to show you the caveman way of doing it. From pill, import image TK and image as well. You're going to need these to access uh, the image libraries now getting into the programming menu bg is our menu background that's the coffee shop jpeg right here and the way that i did it the caveman way i did it is image dot open os dot paths dot join sys path and then in brackets zero what this does is it'll look for this name in the directory that your python file is in and it's going to open it for reading the last parameter R is for reading purposes only, no writing. So it can't change the file, it can only read it. Once we have image.opened our file, I resized it by doing resized image equals menu bg dot resize. Because once you have this as an image variable, you can just use the resize method and change the dimensions of your image. I made it 384 by 384. I also made this resized image a global variable so that I can use it in my other functions so I don't have to pass it to the next function. Once we go to main menu, you. We have background equals image tk dot photo image resized image. Image tk dot photo image just prepares the image to be formatted for Tekinter. So once we go to our canvas on our main page, I do canvas dot create image, give it coordinates on where it should be placed, and image equals background. Before we had canvas dot create window, but since we are working with an image, we are doing canvas dot create image, and we can just set image equals background. So make sure you do those steps correctly to successfully import and place your image. Let's go over it again. You want to first open the image with the image library, resize it. It's just best to resize it before you place it. Access the image with image tk dot photo image so that Tekinter can use it and canvas.create image with the image equals background. Once we have that all done, it should look something like this. I did the same thing for these little cups right here for the images, except I put them in a button. So if you look right here in my Tekinter button, the button widget actually takes an image parameter. So you can put an image in the button and compound it wherever you like. I compounded it left so it's on the left side of the text file selection so i briefly talked about this with images but let's go more over file selection so in our database application we had query equals file dialog as open file name and that simply opens up this window right here where it accesses the files in your computer and you can select a file once you have selected a file this query the thing that is equal to this file dialog widget is going to equal the path to that file and this really comes in handy with the images like we talked about before or just opening certain additional files that your application needs for this application it's a database viewer and we look at csv files so i make sure to error check if it is a csv file if the last three characters of the file name do not equal csv it will ask you to open a CSV file. The last thing that we are going to be going over today is error messages. Like you just saw before, this error message of, oh, you need to open a CSV file is very useful for telling you where things go wrong. Especially if you have try and accepts in your Tekinter application, it could be very helpful with uh, seeing if certain chunks of code didn't actually get executed. The way you would do this is from Tekinter import message box. And you actually don't even need a Tekinter window or 
anything. Just if an error happens, you would do message box dot show error. The first parameter is the title of the window and the second parameter is the text that it shows. So let me show you how that correlates. File error is our title and please open a CSV file is our message that we want to display. It also doesn't have to be um, error. You can also do show info. And this is good for if you're not trying to give an error, you are trying to just say, okay, maybe you've done this, maybe you've done that. But for this case of needing to select a CSE file, I need to show an error. There's one last one and there's a warning and it looks like this. Right. So it just gives you a warning. This is good if the user is about to do something that may crash the application. But for our case, I feel like an error just works a lot better. So there you have it. The advanced to Keenster tutorial. We've gone over some different widgets today, some different applications, and kind of just how you should format your to Keenster applications if you are making a big project. I hope this helped you guys out. I hope this taught you guys some stuff. If you have any questions about any of these widgets or about any additional widgets, let me know down in the comments and and I will be sure to help you out. As always, keep learning, stay humble, and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great day.